All right, we're back, and in the last video, we talked about deal method one, where like you have a static hand size. That's good for a game like poker, but what about other games? What about those card game, trading card games? The games where you're drawing every turn and you want to do stuff like that. In those cases, it might be better to use this deal method too. So let's just go ahead and start by writing a new function here. Call this deal method two. And in this function, um, what we're going to be doing is we're going to resize the deck every time a card is drawn. And we'll also resize the hand every time a card is drawn. So that's going to do, um, it's going to do wonders for our game, but it does require a little bit more work. So let's just dive into it. In deal method two, um, we're going to start with another temporary card array again. So we'll call this after draw. It'll be the hand after you draw. And this temporary card array is going to be of size hand length plus one. So um, what we need to do is, you know what, for deal method two, it might even be better if we just feed in a player. So we can put a player here, pass in a player value, and we'll call it P. So that when we call deal method two, we'll have to specify a player. Okay. So what we're going to do is this card array is going to be one bigger than that player's hand. So we'll do p.hand.length plus one. And the point of this is we're dealing them a card, so their hand is going to increase in size by one. After that, what we're going to do is we're going to use the copy to feature, copy to function. We're going to say p.hand.copy to. And then what you want to do is after draw comma zero. So what this means is we're going to start with the player's hand, copy all of its elements to after draw starting at zero in after draw. So there's going to be one blank space at the very end of after draw since it is the player's hand length plus one. So after that, let's just go ahead and fill in that blank space. We're going to say after draw and then feed it in. Um, you know what? Let's use p.hand.length because that's going to be the very last card in after draw equals deck of cards zero. And then after that, what we want to do is we want to assign our player's hand value again, p.hand equals after draw. So this is actually going to change the size of the array. It's going to make it this new size, which is one bigger. So let's go over this real quick because it's kind of heavy you created an array that's empty that's like one size bigger than the current hand. You copied the current hand leaving one space open. You filled in that space at the very end and then you reassigned the value of that array to the hand. After that we need to get rid of this deck zero card. This is like the top card of the deck. We need to get rid of that. So what we're going to do is we're going to create another card array and this one will be for the deck. So we'll call this temp deck. And this one will be of size deck of cards dot length minus one. So this is going to be one less than the current deck length. And what we want to do is we want to create a loop for int i equals one. Notice how I didn't start at zero this time. Okay, for i equals one, i is less than deck of cards. Dot length. I know I keep saying deck of cards, it's just the deck. Deck dot length i plus plus. So what we're doing here is we're gonna fill in this temporary deck with all the values except for the first card. So we're gonna say temp deck i minus one equals deck of cards i. So the temporary deck at the index of i minus 1, because it starts at 1, so we want to start at 0, it's going to be equal to the deck at index i. So in the deck, we actually want to ignore the 0. But in the temporary one, we want to start at 0. That'll fill it up, and then at the very end, we just need to reassign. So we're going to say deck equals temp deck. And at this point, we're done, and it should work except we have to start calling this deal method and assign a player to it. So we're not going to use deal method one. 
And again, we don't want to shuffle while we're testing because it just makes things a little bit more complicated. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to have to have a little bit of a loop here. We're going to go for int i equals 0. i is less than players.length. So it's the same loop that we've done before. i++. plus plus. And every player is going to get a certain number of cards. Well, let's say we wanted to deal each player seven cards. How would I do that? I'm going to go deal method two. And then players i except I want to copy that and paste it seven times. Oops. Copy that, paste it seven times. So now each player is going to get seven cards. And notice how we initialize the players at zero, so they're going to have size one, size two, size three, size four, all the way up to seven. All right, at this point, it's working. We can test it out. Um, I do recommend when you create something like this, just for debugging purposes at the very end it might be a good idea to put in a couple of debugging lines so we're going to get in the habit of this debug.log if you add a card to their hand let's figure out how big their hand is so we're going to say player and we want to know which player it is so p dot player index so p dot index now we'll open up another string here give it a space just drew a card and has plus p.hand.length. We're going to figure out how many cards are in their hand. Plus, oops, in hand. And at the very end, put a semicolon. So we put a debug statement here just so that we can kind of figure out if things are working as intended. I saved the file and then I'm going to go back into the game and I'm going to pay attention to the console now. Take a look. Player 0 just drew a card and it has 1 in hand, 2 in hand, 3 in hand, 4 in hand, 5 in hand, 6 in hand, 7 in hand, and then it goes on to the next player. And this repeats all the way through player 3. So it looks like our deal function is working. Now the real test here is if you look at the players we should have our sequential cards in hand as well as if you go to the deck, it should no longer be size 52. Instead, we've dealt out, what, 28 of the cards? And so it makes sense that now we're at size 24. So every card that we dealt out is gone. And the difference with this method is every time you draw a card, it removes it from the deck. That opens up the possibility of shuffling the deck again. It opens up the possibility of shuffling a player's hand. It opens up the possibility of letting the player play a card and then keeping track of where it is as it goes along. So it's a little bit more code intensive, but it does have its rewards. So that is the end of deal method two. Um, hope this was helpful and stay tuned for the next video. In the next video, we're going to be talking about um, actually playing the cards and putting them on a game board. See you soon. Like and subscribe.